so far? You're allowed to ask questions, I promise. I won't get too mad at you. Not even mad, not even a little. Fine. That would really make sense. It's not going to be word problems. I love the disdain with which you asked that. It's not going to be word problems, are there? <laughs> They're all word problems. They have words in them and problems. <coughs> We're going to start off nice and simply. Uh, I'll give you some very easy ones to accomplish. And after that, we'll have more work involved in them. So I want to start you off just basic, basic, OK? So most of your homework will not look like this. Uh, some of the ones that are like on the first part will. It'll just give you a picture and say, hey, this one's on top, this one's on bottom. Then I'm going to show you a way to find out which function is actually on top. So in this, I'm going to say, find the area bounded above, which tells you the function above, and bounded below which tells you the function below on a certain interval. Very easy to set up. That's the one the pictures are going to give you on the homework. They're easy to set up. They're not bad. So we're going to do one of those, and then I'm going to show you how to do something a little bit more advanced. So find the area bounded above. By that function. And bounded below by this function on a given interval. They got to give you an interval, or you have to be able to find one on zero two. You know, sometimes for these, if they don't tell you what's bounded above or bounded below, it's nice to draw a picture. Get the idea. See which one's above, which one's below. You don't have to absolutely because I'm going to give you a way to do this uh, without having to draw a single picture. But sometimes it helps just to make sure you see it in your head. You, you with me on that? You're okay, now I can see which one's above and which one's below. That's not true. But you don't have to. Well, hey, let's try to set it up. We All we need to know for this is where you start, where you stop, and which one's on top. That's basically it. So area between two curves says, hey, where do you start? Come on. Zero. Where are you end? Two. What function is on the top? Uh -huh. When it says bounded above, it means for the whole interval. When it says bounded below, it means for the whole interval. Uh, if it didn't say bounded above or below, we would find those regions, and we'd be able to determine that. So bounded above by 2x plus 5. Uh, do I add or subtract? Subtract. Yeah, you're subtracting. Remember, you're basically taking big area minus small area to find the area between them. Also, I'm going to show you something here that I don't want you to neglect. Some of you are famous, infamous, I guess would be the word, for <laughs> neglecting parentheses. Notice that parentheses, not in this case, but in some cases will be very important because that sign will distribute if there was more than one term. Do you follow me on that? If I give you uh, x cubed plus 1, for instance, there's a huge difference between this integral and that integral. Do you see it? The sign would definitely, definitely change. So I'd like you to practice putting parentheses just saying, hey, this is my top function, this is my bottom function. Then if the parentheses don't do anything, so what? You erase them. But at least you don't forget them. You got me? Because that would, that would be so horrible to understand this concept, which you seem to, you know, and be able to set the problem, which you seem to, and then get the wrong answer. That's the worst kind of ignorance. Oh my gosh, being able to do something and not following through and getting it right, that's the worst. Because it's not even ignorance, right? It's just failure to perform. No one likes that. So parentheses in this case aren't doing anything. We got 2x plus 5 minus x cubed dx. Notice how we don't have to have two separate integrals. When we put them together like this, it just basically becomes one large integral, which is great. We could, we could easily do that. It's just subtracting off this piece of the puzzle. Can you do the integral? Go for it. Go for it. Do the integral. Evaluate it. You know how to do this. Remember that what I'm teaching you now is really not anything new. It's just an application of the process. 
application integrals to find the area between two curves. The next problem is one you can expect on a test, uh, this coming test, as it were, something like the, the next one. So we'll, we'll do this one, be, be prepared. This is kind of an easier example that I'm giving you. It's very easy to set up, it's all given to you, and you can do it very quickly. That one has a little bit more setup, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So doing your integral here, hopefully you were able to come up with, which is what I'm going to do, 2x squared over 2 plus 5x, don't forget about that 5x, minus x to the fourth over 4. Yes, no? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the 2, we can simplify that. So x squared plus 5x, looks a little funny, plus 5x minus x to the 4 to the 4, and we're going to evaluate from 0 to 4, 0 to 2. There's nice, there, there's no substitution that we needed, we can just go for a direct plugging in some numbers. So our area is, we'll plug in the 2, Subtract. When we plug in 0, we're going to get 0. I'm just going to show it so we don't forget it. Don't forget to plug in 0 because sometimes if you do have some constant in there, especially with the substitution, it won't be 0. <clears throat> but make sure you make a note of that. So in our case, our area is going to give you... How much is all that? How much? 18. 18? More people got 18? 10. Oh, let's see. 4, 10, and 4. 10. Watch the negative that subtracts 4. Show of hands, how many feel okay with this so far? Cool deal. Now, would you like to try a problem that's a little bit more robust? This one, pretty basic. Pretty basic. Hopefully, we're, we're all okay with that one. Now, something that's not as basic is find the area bound by, or another way to say that is find the area between these two curves. I'm going to give you some steps on how to do that. Follow these steps to the letter that will walk you through every problem, okay? Follow the steps. When it's, set, when it's like this, very easy. You can set up the problem. When it's like this, follow the steps. Here's the step. And a sketch does help. If you have a graphing calculator, sometimes it does help. Plug it in, find out which one's on top. But I'll show you how to do it without a graphing calculator, of course. First one, you know, before you can find the area between two curves, you've got to find where those curves intersect. Do you notice I didn't give you a range? I didn't give you from 0 to 2 or from something to something. That means that this is going to be completely enclosed between some boundary of our curves. When that happens, when I don't give you an interval, you need to be able to find the interval. Now, fortunately, it's just based on the x-intercepts because that's how our integrals work from x equals whatever to x equals whatever, from a to b. So step number one is find the x-coordinates of where your curves intersect. Okay, tell me, how do we find the x-coordinates of the intersection of our curves? What would you do for that? Say what? We're going to take y equals zero. Equals zero, not quite, you're close. How do you find out where two curves cross? You set them equal, you find out where they are equal, right? Where they actually intersect. So, how you do this, set the curves equal to each other. Not zero, but to each other.
I'll do it that way. Set f of x equal to g of x. Whatever your first function is, equal to your second function. Because right now, uh, just off the top of your head, do you know which one of these is on top of the other one? Because I don't, just by, I mean, I can probably figure it out by doing a little math. But right now, just looking at it, it doesn't say it explicitly, does it? It doesn't say, hey, this one's on top. It doesn't say that anywhere. So we're going to have to do a little work, and this is kind of an easier example, but most of the time, you're going to look at them and go, I don't know. You're going to have to do what I'm telling you to do. So take the two functions, set them equal to each other. So go ahead and do that now. Why don't you try to solve it? Get in the habit of doing that again. We haven't done stuff like that in a while. Here's what I mean by set them equal. You take your x squared in this case, set it equal to x plus 6 in this case. No problem. Can you solve it? Yes. Yeah. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. This goes back to your algebra days, right? Whenever you see a quadratic, you always get things to one side and you solve with quadratic formula or you factor. Typically, factoring is the best way to go. You rarely want to complete the square. It takes too long. And if you can't factor, you use quadratic formula. So that's how you complete quadratic. So in our case we have x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. Yes, no? Hopefully. Factoring is pretty basic on this one. You're going to have x minus 3 and x plus 2. That means x minus 3 equals 0 x plus 2 equals 0. Stop me if I make a mistake, by the way. you allowed to do that. 3 and negative 2. How many other people got down to that far? Okay, so your algebra still checks out, right? Hey, guess what you have right now? Your balance. Get your balance. Get your balance integration. Where do your balance start? Uh -huh. Where do they stop? So automatically you have this. You know your integral starts at negative 2 and ends at 3. Because that's where they intersect. That's where your areas are going to start and stop. That's going to be enclosed in that graph. you got to figure, if your graphs intersect two spots, here and here, and they're continuous, there will be at least some area between them, unless they're exactly the same curve, which they won't be. Otherwise, they'd have an infinite number of intersections, right? So they're going to have some area between them. Now, it could do this. like it could go. There could be lots of areas, but it will have at least some. Now, if there were more than just one, there'd be more numbers here. Wherever they intersect would give you another range of an integral, <coughs> another bounds of integration. So this just has one range. It's from negative 2 to 3. That means we'll only get one integral. Are you with me on this? So I'll say it again because some of you, I lost you. I can see it in your eyes. Um, listen, when you set two functions equal to each other, you find the only places that they will intersect. you believe me? If they intersect at two spots, there's only one region between there. If they intersected at three spots, there'd be two regions between there. If they intersected at four spots, there'd be three regions between there that you would have to calculate. Do you get it? And it would it might alternate which is on top and which is on the bottom. Here, we only need to figure out for this one interval which is on the top and which is on the bottom. So that brings us to step two. Determine which is on the top. Which function is on top? How would you do that? How would you do that? 